Hello, my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. In this week's video, we're gonna dive into the world of unions in Tableau Prep. Uh, so let's start off with what are unions, okay? So we'll do a little diagramming here. And a union is when you want to append two tables of data vertically in Tableau. Well, really anywhere, Tableau, Desktop, Tableau Prep, SQL, there's a lot of places you can do this. But the idea with a union is, okay, let's say I've got you know two tables and forgive the fact that they're not actually the same size. If I append them vertically, let's say they're each 1,000 rows, right? And then I append them vertically, and now they're 2,000 rows, right? So on the one hand, um, this is a sort of a simple form of a union. Let's say that they were both 10 columns. Now our resulting table of data is 10 columns by 2,000 rows, right? So that's one type of union. You'll see that a lot of times when you're like, hey, I want to append the data from 2024 to the data from 2023. And for some reason they were in different sheets or different tables, cool. Um, so that's what I would call like a same structure union. Um, there are also scenarios of this where maybe you're unioning tables and they only share some of their columns. So you could end up with something that's, you know, like kind of same idea, but let's say only five of the 10 columns were shared. So now your output, your result set of data, may be 15 columns um, by 2000 rows. Like that's a possibility as well. You might say, when would I want to do something like that? Uh, well, if you're combining uh, two tables of data that's loosely related. So for example, um, if you're working with a restaurant chain and you want to take the sales data and you want to union that to the labor data. So you want to be able to see on a given day at a given store, how many people worked, how many hours did they work? How did that compare to our sales? You know, were we profitable? Though that's a scenario, hey, maybe you want to union those two tables, okay? So let's look at some data that we're gonna use in the world of Tableau Prep today. Um, and this is some Mount Rainier climbing data. Mount Rainier, the tallest mountain in Washington state, my home state, uh, it's about 14,000 feet, fun fact. And this data, one row of data represents a climbing party. So uh, this row that I selected here on January 28th, 2015, a climbing party of two people attempted to summit via the Gibraltar ledges route and they both successfully summited. Next day, a group of four tried to summit and nobody successfully summited from that group. So that's what this is. I've got 10 years worth of data. This is real data. Uh, I downloaded it from the National Park Service. If I can find the website where I downloaded it from, I'll provide that in the description. It was 2017, I think, when I got this. So it may or may not still be available. Uh, regardless, I'll put a link to this Excel workbook in the description. So if you wanna download a copy of this, then you can follow along in Tableau Prep or maybe whatever other tool that you're using to do your unions in, okay? So let me now flip over to Tableau Prep where I've already established a connection to this Excel file and let's dive in. So I'm gonna start by grabbing my 2006 detailed table and then drag and drop this into the view, the editor of Tableau Prep, okay? Um, so the input step is showing, let's see what we can find out about this. Okay, we've got five fields. There's date, route, number of climbers, number successful, and then Tableau's, uh, Tableau Prep did its thing where it adds and then removes the row ID. I don't think we need it, so we're, we're good with that. Um, just for the record, I don't know that Tableau Prep shows you the row count here yet, so just so that you know. Uh, I'm gonna add a clean step to this really quick. You can see there's 1,983 rows from the 2006 detailed sheet, okay? Um, so each year we'll have roughly 2,000 climbing parties. It does vary you know, year by year a little bit. Okay, now let's say I wanna union the 2007 detailed, right? Because if I wanna be able to answer a question of how many people climbed the Disappointment Cleaver route by year from 2006 to 2015, I will need to combine all this data together, right? Or if I wanna say, what are the top five most common routes that people take? I need to combine all this data together, right? So let's input the 2007 detailed uh, step or input table, whatever I'm trying to say here. Uh, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the 2007, I'm gonna hover right near the 2006 input and you're gonna see something pop up that says union. So let's drop that on there. Okay, so now, Tableau Prep is automatically unioning these two tables. Uh, and 
honestly, everything is fantastic. Uh, all of my column names are the same across the two different sheets. They both have a date and a round and a number of climbers. And I wanna show you a couple of helpful little things here. So you'll see that this kind of color coding uh, on the ribbon here at the top of these columns, like date has, it's half blue, half orange. Those colors are actually meaningful. Um, they tie back to the source table where this data came from, right? So this is showing you, I guess, probably a more direct place to do it would see it here. You can see that the 2006 detailed input has a date column and the 2007 detailed column has uh, the date column. And then another important thing is there's nothing here in the mismatched fields section. So cool, there's no scenario where there's like some random column that exists in one table, but not the other, okay? So, so far so good, all right? Uh, if I want to, I can add a clean step after this just to see what things look like. Um, so now you can see we've got about 4,000 rows of data. Uh, this is excellent, number of climbers, successful, a little bit of unclean data, not bad. Now Tableau did add this, uh, this field automatically, table names. That's just a field that Tableau will add to help you remember where did this data come from. Okay, uh, so let's add another input to our I don't know, our whole workflow here, right? So now we've got our 2008 detailed input. Now I wanna point out something really important. I think a lot of people, when they're first using this, they don't really know this. So a lot of people will take the 2008 detailed input or whatever their third table is, and they will put it under union again after the union step. Technically, nothing wrong with that, but I wouldn't do that um, because now your table names is just gonna show the like 2006 slash 2007 or 2008. And if there's some mismatched field, like it's just gonna get wonky. What you can actually do is you can input up to 10 uh, input steps into a single union tool. What do I mean by that? Uh, let me show you. So I'm gonna right click and remove the new union. And what I'm gonna do instead is take the 2008 detailed, hover over my existing union step and drop it on here where it says add. So now I've actually got three different input table inputs uh, feeding into the same union tool. And now the beauty and the benefit of this is now check this out, right? So if you look at the little ribbon, the little banner at the top of each column, now it's got three different color codings for the 2006, seven and eight inputs, All right? Pretty nice. And now my clean step, I should have about 6,000 rows. Okay, so lucky us, we have exactly 10 tables. So this is gonna be perfect. We're gonna be able to input all 10 of those into this union step. So let me just go ahead and double click on all these and just do kind of a mass addition here. Alrighty, and let's throw all of these in there. Okay, so bear with me. We're just gonna add, 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 add over and over again. Okay, it's a little tricky when they're so far down here. So let's go ahead and just drag them up. Add a couple of more. Okay. Now, things have probably gotten a little interesting for us here. Uh, okay, so there is a mismatched field now, and it's called uh, leader zip code. So, okay, what's going on with that? This is interesting. Uh, if we go back to the source data, we'll actually see that there is no such column as leader zip code in the first few years, but eventually somewhere along the way, I think 2009, it's not very well filled out, but the National Park Service did start asking for a leader zip code. So presumably when you fill out your climbing pe uh, permit and you uh, present it to the National Park Service, they ask you your personal information, name, contact info, all this stuff. But maybe before that, they weren't really asking about leader zip code, but they wanted to start to better understand where are people coming from? Are these a lot of local people? Are they from the other side of the country, the other side of the world? What's going on here? Okay. so. Somewhere along the way, they started to track that. So you'll see that leader zip code, it shows as unmatched, but there's no real natural thing to match it up with because 2006, seven, eight, these don't have a leader zip code. So whatever, unmatched field, no worries. Now, what if there was an unmatched field that uh, should not have been unmatched, right? So I actually just realized I forgot 2015. So sorry, 2015, still a good year. Let's go ahead and add that here as well. And this is gonna be the 10th and final uh, table that inputs to this union step. And now, wah, 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 we do have, I'm sorry, I highlighted the wrong thing here. We do have a number of climbers, which is mismatched from climbers. So same thing, 
for whatever reason in 2015, it fell under a different naming convention, okay? So what do we do? Well, if those are really the same field and they should be merged, then what we could do, we have a couple options really. Um, I can take my climbers and just drag and drop on the number of climbers. And if I do that, that will merge those together. And now they become a single column called number of climbers, okay? There's some other places that you can do those merges as well. So let me see if I can find any of those for us. Some of the other options just to show you. Um, you can also control select multiple columns and then there's a merge button up here or kind of the new one I'm trying to get used to because I think it's not, especially when you have like a hundred columns, this is really nice. What you can do is I could take a field like number of climbers, select that here in mismatched fields, go find what is the other mismatched field, hit the plus button, and then that effectively merges it in. So number of climbers now just consumed the climbers column. That's, that's how I'll say it, right? So now that's not showing as mismatch anymore. Yay. Um, sweet. So if we go to our clean step now, we should see a, uh, you know, table name uh, or 10 different values in table names. You can see all the names of the sheets from the Excel workbook where these came from. Got all this nice combined data. So now if I want to answer my question about like, what are the most common routes? I can do that. Now, full disclosure, this data is pretty messy. So if you want to work with it for real, like d all these different DC and disappointment cleavers, those are all the same climbing, uh, the same route. It's just that people put them in differently on their climbing pass or uh, maybe the people that were inputting the data. Some people went with the acronym, some people spelled it all the way out. But at least we can say, okay, what were the most you know common records in the data source? So a couple of disappointment cleavers, Emmons Winthrop, Couts Glacier, Ingram Direct. Fun fact, I once unsuccessfully attempted to summit on disappointment cleaver and then once successfully summited with my pals on Ingram Direct. So there you go, kind of a lesser used route. Um, okay, so that's very big picture. That is how you do unions in Tableau Prep, but we're not done. I wanna talk a little bit about wildcard unions, okay? Real quick before we do that though, just two quick things. Uh, first of all, we run Tableau classes every month. Um, one of those is a Tableau prep class. And so uh, I'm gonna put the description, uh, I'll put a link in the description below. So if you wanna check out our classes, you can. There should be an info button up here as well. Um, we also do office hours. So if you ever just need personalized help, if you're like, hey, listen, I don't need a class, uh, but I am stuck on this thing, please help me. Um, you can also just pay for one hour and, and we can just jump in and help you. And we're usually available within a couple days notice, sometimes even same day. So I'll put a link to that down below as well. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's talk about wildcard unions. So, so what is that, right? So everything that we just did here, that is a, a manual union, meaning like we manually dragged all 10 of those inputs and put them in the union tool. Now there is an alternative. Um, let me show you this. I'm gonna bring a new copy of the 2006 detailed table in. And there is a method where we can just auto add all 10 of those sheets at the same time. Uh, there, there are some drawbacks as well. So I'll try and speak to those. Uh, but, uh, okay, so here's the profile pane for my 2006 detail two input the second time I brought this in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the tables tab here in my input step. And I, you can see that I've got the option to input a single table or multiple tables. Now, quick side note, what we're about to do with this wildcard union input, it's pretty much only available for uh, file-based data. So, so like a Excel file, a CSV, a text file, all of those are valid. Um, this is likely not going to work with like a database or like some cloud-based data source. So if you're like, uh, I'm using SQL, then like you could probably write this off. I mean, you could double check to see maybe things have changed since I shot this, but in, in reality, this wildcard union is, is mostly just available, available for file-based data. So I go to union multiple tables and I can start to add some criteria to this. So the first of all, it says, okay, uh, you want a union multiple tables. It's coming from this folder, YouTube video content. What's up? Thanks for being here. Uh, and so what we'll do is say, okay, the file where it needs to come from is Mount Rainier data XLSX. Cool. That's the Excel workbook that we opened. If I wanted to expand that, um, you know, we, we could remove that and say, hey, actually it could come from multiple files here. Uh, but what I wanna do is potentially add a worksheet filter. Like let's say I actually had a couple extra worksheets in here. If there was like, hey, this summarized table that has all the data. And I'm like, I don't wanna union that because then I'd be doubling up on my data. 
So you could actually add a filter based on your worksheet name, right? So I could say something like, hey, if it starts with a two zero wild card, you know, two zero one nine, and then ends with detailed, like that is the name structure of the um, sheets that I'm trying to add. Now, like I said, this, the, the, the asterisk is a wild card, right? So if I apply this, it really shouldn't change anything. I'm still gonna have 10 tables included, but if I did have an 11th summary table, then it would have gotten, or it would be no longer included. If you don't put anything here, it's just gonna union all the sheets in that workbook. So if you have like 50 sheets that you need to union, this may very well be an approach that you wanna take versus the manual input, which would be kind of cumbersome. And, and like I said, it does max out at 10. So if you had an 11th input, you'd have you would have to be like, oh, let me union this here again. Okay, so let me get back to our wildcard uh, union here. Now, already you can see something that's a little bit different. You can see that there's a little uh, kind of page icon with the plus button next to it on my input step versus just the kind of standard page icon, table icon. Uh, and if I just do a clean step here, now uh, similar, right? I've got about 20,000 rows of data. So it did union, right? all 10 years. Um, now, something that you do miss out on, you miss out on that nice union interface, right? The one where it showed us the mismatch columns and the color and did this exist in table A or table B. So I do feel like that's a bit of a drawback. Like, okay, if I, if I figure out that my climbers field is mismatched, I can still fix it here, right? I can still merge it. I can still take climbers and drag and drop that on number of climbers, no problem. Um, but it does require, like I would say, a bit more kind of careful combing of the data to make sure that you know what you're working with versus this union input is so great when you're a little bit less familiar with the data and you're trying to figure out, oh, hey, I didn't realize those two columns had different names, for example. So, um, yeah, so the, yeah, that's kind of a basic overview of the union steps and, and some of your options there. Um, of course, these can be combined with all types of other steps in Tableau Prep, but the Tableau Prep world is so cool and there's so much that you can do here, um, but I hope that this provides you just a good general overview of that union step. So if you do have any questions, please drop them in the comment or send us a message or email us. Um, we would love to help you out and we will look forward to seeing, here, seeing you here next week. We drop a video like this every week. So uh, thanks again and we'll talk to you soon.